Hey everybody and welcome to another JASP tutorial. I realized that I hadn't done much of reliability analysis in JASP and I thought I might as well add them to my video base. So in this episode, we are in this tutorial episode, we are going to take a spin with JASP uh, 0.16.4. Of course, I'm using the Intel version because that's what I have on my home computer. Um, if I you see any JASP videos that say like Mac or whatever, or Silicon or whatever it is, then that, that's because I have a MacBook Pro with uh, one of their uh, uh, M chips. Anyways, I don't know why you need to know that. That's weird. I'm, I'm, I don't know. I'm weird. Uh, so in this one, we are going to uh, use some made up data that I just made up um, to explore the reliability module, but specifically the uh, inner rater reliability analysis function. OK, so as you can see, I don't have the ability to uh, open it because I don't have any data open yet. So let me show you the data and you can pause it. I'm going to bring up Excel here. I'm, and there's a few things that I have to do in the background, so there's going to be a quick cut. So pause it here so you can follow along. It's to, imagine that um, this data is a set of three judges that are going uh, that are judge contestants on a, a scale from uh, uh, zero to uh, ten. Ten being the best, uh, and zero being the worst. As you can see, there aren't very many low scores because this is like America's Got Talent or something like that. I don't know, but in any case, we are going to see and use the interclass. Uh, excuse me, the iterator reliability function to see how consistent. Uh, how much in agreement these two judges or three judges are. So quick cut and I'll be back with you. You won't even know the difference. OK, so here we are with the data open. And again, you can uh, pause it here and uh, get the data uh, again. Ten contestants, three judging each. And we're going to use the reliability module and the rater agreement function to discuss this. So this rater agreement, we go up to reliability. You have to have this module installed uh, down here. Uh, you check that box and it will put it up here. Uh, we're going to open that up, and these are uh, under the classical. Now, unidimensional reliability already exists on my channel. This uses uh, this uses the uh, Chromebox Alpha for um, inter-item reliability. Okay, so we are going to use Raider Agreement here. We're going to use Raider Agreement. Uh, now we're going to open that, and I'll talk about what Raider Agreement actually is. So Raider Agreement is uh, the ability to use Cohen's Kappa, Fleiss's Kappa, Krippendorf's Alpha uh, that measure agreement between Raiders on a nominal or ordinal scale, right? And so these judges are, uh, are ordinal scale, right? So a two is better than a one, a three is better than a two, a four is better than a three. But while they are on a number line, we really don't know if there is a difference between a two and a three that is the same. Like that interval is one, but does it actually reflect the same conceptual difference? And that's the argument about Likert scales. Now, on a Likert scale, one to five, strongly disagree to strongly agree. If we're going from a one to a two from a strongly disagree to somewhat disagree, what does that even mean? And so that's the uh, that's that's the argument. That's the debate about Likert scales and whether or not they are truly ordinal or you can use them in an interval way. But with our made up data here with these judges, they're using their own minds to assign a value of a seven or an eight. What makes the difference between the seven or the eighth? Well, their expertise. That's why they're judges. Right. Um, and so if you ever watch the Olympics and you watch how judging in the Winter Olympics and figure skating or in the Summer Olympics with gymnastics and how that all works out, there's complex formulas and everything. That's why there's, uh, you know, a, a space between them. Now, imagine here we're looking at dancing with the stars and they just hold up a whole number. But of course, Len is going to be different from Carrie Ann. Don't ask me how I know these things. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I, I, Carrie Ann Inaba and Len Grossman or whatever his name is. I don't even know. Uh, I know his first name is Len, but Carrie Ann, um, you know, she throws up a, a five and Len throws up a six. Well, what makes those two things different? Well, that's where this Raider agreement module comes in. Um, and so these are all based on, you know, 1960, 1970 analyses. These are created. These So these are created several decades ago. Um, and, you know, they work as best as they can. OK, so we're going to put in um, our judges. OK, so. We're going to do Cohen's, Fleiss's, and Krippendorf's all at the same time. And for Cohen's, I am going to use the default of the unweighted value because I have no uh, reasons to weight them. So what is the difference between unweighted and weighted? Unweighted kappa treats all disagreements between judges, between your raters, equally. So they're all in the same playing field. Weighted, however, so weighted kappa takes degrees of disagreement into account. So the more things disagree, the kappa is going to be affected. Um, Kappa, uh, Fleiss's kappa, there's no changes there. And then Krippendorf's alpha. Krippendorf's alpha is calculated differently depending on the level of measurement of your variables. Uh, so the option allows to select the method corresponding. So is it nominal, ordinal, interval, or ratio? And I'm going to choose ordinal because that's what we got. Um, that's what we're making. Uh, that's what we're assuming these judges' ratings are. Okay. The available levels are all of the main ones. Okay. And then you can get your 95% confidence interval, which would be nice. We have the tables ready to go. Tables ready to go. And so let's put our variables in put all three of them in at the same time. 
Okay, um, and so let's go through each of these one at a time. So here is Cohen's unweighted kappa. The average kappa value is 0 0.09. And I'll talk about that before we get into the differences between one and uh, between the different judges. Okay, so 0 0.09. So here we have and, and we're going to use updated agreement of values. Uh, so so the conventional values here, if you click on the I. Uh, this button here, it'll bring that up and it'll give you the uh, it'll give you the outputs here. And I'll go ahead and slide that over so you can see it. OK, and so we're going to focus on here. OK, less than zero poor agreement between 0 0.01 and 0 0.2. That's where we're at. Slight agreement 0.21 to 0.4 fair agreement, 0.41 to 0.6 moderate agreement and between 0 0.61 and 0 0.8 substantial, uh, although there is a uh, <laughs> substantial. All right. Little typo there. Um, substantial agreement and then 0.81 to 0.1 or to 1, excuse me, is almost perfect agreement. So right. Less than zero negative value. They are bad. OK, so we've got 0 0.09 and I knew that was going to do that. So we've got 0 0.09 here. So we are sitting at slight agreement between all three judges. Ooh, boy, that's not great. Slight agreement. What's the problem? Well, it looks like as we go through each of the single paired comparisons, it looks like there's a problem with judge one and judge two. Judge one and judge two. How dare you? I have no idea. <laughs> judge one and judge two is less than zero. So there is poor agreement between these two. Judge one and judge three, 0 0.324, 0 0.324. Fair agreement. Again, I, this was random. Could have done a random number generator. I didn't do that because I, I thought they would just be wildly different. I tried to keep them relatively simple. But again, this was randomly canned data uh, or sort of not random, but just picked and picked, I guess. Imputed. I don't even know. I did not use an imputation method. Uh, so fair agreement between one and three and then fair agreement. No, no, not fair agreement. Slight agreement between judge two and three. And so here we have judge one and two and judge one and three sort of counteracting with each other. So we don't have a lot of agreement between these judges. Let's take a look at Fleiss's kappa. OK, Fleiss's kappa overall is 0.08. Sort of gives us a similar thing. Landis and Koch um, or Koch, 97, uh, 1977, not 97, excuse me, 77, um, sort of the same, uh, the same thing. Uh, they even copied typo. Great. Uh, so 0 0.08. And you can see that um, for ratings and this this table will give you ratings of any value that appears. So you can see that four is lowest. Nobody was rated one, two or three. Right. They were all, you know, generally fine or great. And you can see how much weight, uh, how much. Uh, kappa is given for each of these, how much agreement between the three judges. So Cohen's gives you the differences between judges. Fleiss's kappa gives you the difference in ratings on uh, difference in judges on the ratings, right? So fours weren't agree ag agreed on. Fives weren't agreeing on. The sixes, eh, some slight agreement. Some sevens, not really. Uh, slight agreement as well. Um, Nothing over point. Oh, no, eights. There were, um, oh, there we go. There we go. We've got some fair agreements between the judges on how they assigned eights. That's not bad. But then everything else was bad. Uh, so, and you can see here the note, 10 subject items, um, and three raters. Confidence intervals are asymptotic. Oh, I forgot to 10. Oh, the same thing. Same note. Both notes. So that's that. So that's uh, Cohen's and Kappa's. They give you two ways to look at uh, agreement. So again, Cohen's is on the judges' differences or the raters' differences and how well they agree. And then Fleiss's kappa is on the ratings agreements between all three judges. Okay, Krippendorf's alpha. The table shows Krippendorf's alpha for overall agreement. If selected, a confidence interval for the alpha estimate will also be reported, right? So we don't have a big table here. Krippendorf, uh, so this is a more recent version here, 2004, last uh, last century here, or current century, I should say. Um, following the guidelines here, so Krippendorf uh, argues that anything less than 0.66, okay, 0.66 is unacceptable agreement, right? So if you have judges that fall under that, you're just like, oh, and as you can see here that my can data is Ooh, not great. Not great, Bob. Uh, between 0.66 and 0.8 is tentatively acceptable. That's a big, that's a 0.14 difference there. And then 0.81 to 0.99 is acceptable agreement. And then one is perfect agreement. That's if they all have the same values, right? So we can see here that um, our ordinal measurement of Krippendorf's alpha is 0.012. No, unacceptable agreement. And we sort of got that already from looking at Cohen's kappa and Fleiss's kappa. Um, the vast majority is poor or not great, right? Poor or fair or slight, you know, and the ratings, the only eights, only the eights were distributed well. Uh, not great, right? And you can see here that uh, the 95% confidence interval includes zero. So this note is a little bit different. OK, so we've got note, 10 subjects, items, three measure, three raters measurements. Confidence intervals are based on percentiles from a thousand bootstraps replications. That's pretty cool. So the Krippendorf gives you a boost. So that's how you do the rater agreement function in the reliability module in JASP. If you have any comments, suggestions, feedback, questions, leave those down below. Don't forget about channel memberships as a way to support this channel and allow me to keep making these kinds of videos as part of my professional life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.